Hey guys, what's going on? Colin from Tell You How here. Today we're going to be going over a tutorial on how to make this lovely intro. Alright, so as you can see, um, <laughs> pretty good intro if I might uh, say so myself. And all I did was put in about uh, 20 minutes worth of work, that's the creativity the designing, the thinking, um, and you guys probably all know, you know, doing these tutorials and doing the intro off the top of your head are two totally different things. So um, I did all that in about 20 minutes, and I'm going to teach you guys how to do it real fast. So let's go on ahead and get started. Obviously, we are going to be using Video Copilot's brand new plugin, Element 3D. Um, this thing is by far the most powerful plugin that I've ever used, and um, it, really, it's like a graphic designer's dream or a motion graphic designer anyways but you guys are ready to get started right so let's go ahead and do the first few steps all right so we want to want to do is go to our calculator and we're gonna do a little multiplication here go ahead and type in 15,000 multiply times your just kidding but seriously let's go ahead and open up after effects now it really won't matter what After Effects you're using because Element will install into just about every After Effects so um, as long as you have the current up-to-date OS then you'll be good to go. I don't know why it's been giving me that uh, notice lately. And let's go ahead and drag the media that we're going to be using into here. Oh wait, never mind. We won't be. This is all going to be done inside of Element 3D. So we're going to start out by making a new composition. I recommend 1920 by 1080. It's your choice, really. I'd go 29.97 frames per second, and uh, leave all the rest of these fine. The duration that won't really matter, but uh, let's just start at say 10 seconds. All right. So first thing you're going to do, make a new solid. It won't matter what color, won't matter what size. Just make a new solid. Next, go to your effects tab, go down to Video Copilot, and click on Element. Once Element is applied to your layer, click on Scene Setup. Now we're going to start out by making the play button rotate, come in, and appear as though it's being clicked. So we're going to go to our icons, we're going to select our play button. You can really do this with any icon or you can even drag in your own custom icon into here. Now I'm going to leave the versatility up to you guys, but whenever I made mine I pretty much just put this blue preset on there, the blue paint, and left it like that. So go ahead and press OK. Now we have this in here. Next thing we're going to do just to get things established, and I don't like working and not being able to see what I'm doing, so I'm going to go ahead and make a new solid, and this one's going to be our background layer. So choose a color you'd like to have as your background. I think that sort of a tur turquoise works well with these colors. So I'm going to choose that, press OK, make sure it's below your 3D layer, and I recommend renaming your 3D layer. You can do this just by pressing enter and renaming it to whatever you want, just to make sure you know what you're on, because as you can see, if you move the 3D layer around, it doesn't just move you know, the play button, it'll move the whole entire layer. So we don't want to do that. So just to make sure we're not doing that, we're going to go on ahead and rename this by pressing enter on the layer, and I'm going to name it 3D. Now on this bottom layer, just to give it a little more uh, spunk, if you will, we're going to go to our ellipse tool, and let's zoom out a little bit, and we're going to make what they call a vignette. Now all this does is just, you know, like I said, add some uh, spunk. No, not really, but... Um, you just kind of want to make a circle and have the edges barely showing and that pretty much does the job Okay, so that works now we're going to go to our mask feather You can do this just by pressing F on the layer and it'll bring up the feather and turn it way up Okay So now we have a good-looking background now one of the things that I did in the actual intro is added a little optical flare up here now you can do that if you want it won't be difficult but I'm not going to show you how to do that in this just because you may not have that 
It is another video copilot product though if you'd like to see it. Okay, so let's start out animating this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to group one, go to the part particle replicator, and make sure it's positioned where you want it. Right in the center is where I like it, so I'm gonna keep it right there. Next thing we're gonna do is go to particle look. Now this allows you to change the rotation and the size of it. So what I'm gonna do is go to the rotation, spin it on the Y axis just a little bit. It's your choice on how you want it to come in. So I'm gonna start there. Press the stopwatch, go down about five or six frames, and then spin it to where you like it again. So to preview this, we can press zero and it'll give us a full RAM preview. So that's what that looks like. I'd like it to start just a little more cocked out, so that way it turns in just a little more, so that works for me. Now as you can see on the actual intro, whenever the play button spins in, it sort of spins in and it kind of comes out of nowhere. Now how I did this was fairly simple. I went to the 3 layer, applied um, a mask of an ellipse tool, just barely, and as you can see, I'd this seems to be a little bit of a glitch, but it doesn't actually do it in a circle. It does it in a square, but that's going to be fine because we're using it really quick anyways. So we're going to go to our mask. We're going to go to the expansion. Click the stopwatch. Drag it all the way down. Go two frames and then drag it up to where it reveals the entire 3D button. And that works just fine. Now, I like to have a little bit of a light shine on the play button. You know, it gives it a little bit of life. So what we're gonna do is right click, go to new, light. You can do whatever you'd like with this. I'm gonna keep it at a color that uh, sort of matches my background and my environment. So uh, we'll just go with sort of a, um, a faint blue. For the light type, I'm gonna go to parallel and press okay. Now I can just move this light around by going to the light options and no, uh, my bad, going to the transform and the point of interest. And if you can move the point of interest around, as you can see it makes a bit of a light flash. So whenever we get right here, we're going to go on ahead and motion track the point of interest and over two frames, two or three frames, we're just going to move it. So it sort of makes a, a little bit of a flash right there. Okay, so as we can see, we have that there. And we're starting to look good, guys, and we haven't had to do any rendering whatsoever. How great is this plugin? Jesus, I'd be like kneeling at Andrew Kramer if I could, which I should. I should just go uh, track him down and do it myself. But anyways, let's go ahead and continue. So you could use a 3D camera to do the next step, but in the intro, I already was in the intro that I made originally I was already going somewhere else with the intro so I had a couple different designs in mind and I already had the three button falling back into space and I just used um, the properties here to do that I didn't actually go with a camera like I should, probably could have and just track the camera back so I'm just for the sake of uh, whatever I'm just gonna go ahead and do that again so whenever it gets right here I'm going to have the rotation on the X or, let's see, rotate, yep. I'm gonna track the rotation on the X. I'm gonna go down about five frames, or 10 frames rather, and I'm just gonna spin it back a little bit. Now, an easy way of doing this, if you press U on the layer, it'll bring up your keyframes so you can see and match it up with other keyframes that you're gonna make. So I'm gonna to go to the first layer I'm sorry, the first keyframe of the X rotation that I just made. And now we're going to go ahead and track the size. So put a, uh, click the stopwatch on the size. Go to the keyframe of the last rotation. And make the size go all the way down. 
to where it sort of looks like it's falling back into, uh, you know, Z space. So now we have that animation right there. Now I've noticed that it falls back just a little too quick, so what I'm going to do, press U again, and we're going to take these keyframes and just drag them out a little bit. Of course, whenever you're making it, I would just recommend not making them that close in the first place, but that's what I'm going to do. So there we go, and now it's falling back. Now, what I'm going to do next is uh, make a text layer with our text tool up here, and you can make this say whatever you want. I'll just say, tell you how for the fun of it. Okay. Go to your effects tab on your 3D layer. Go to custom layers, custom text and mask, path layer one, and select whatever you just wrote. Go to scene setup once again. Press extrude. And there you go, you have your text. Okay. Now, before I get carried away, because I always forget to do this, what you need to do is make sure that this, that this, extrusion model is on group 2 and not on group 1. You see the difference? And this way we can control that variable in itself and not we don't want them all to be one thing. So you can just take a bevel. I'm gonna do that for time's sake. Just drop something on there. Uh, that's a little bit thick but uh, let's just say that. Whatever. Okay so press OK. And I'm gonna go ahead and hide this tell you how. We'll go to group two. And as you can see, I just messed up. Whenever you change the stuff around, this seems to be a glitch right now. It puts it back on group one. So we need to make sure it's on group two. So make sure that's on group two and press OK. So now we're where we want it. OK, I forgot to say this earlier. After we make our play button appear with the mask, what we're going to do is go ahead and go to where we don't need the mask anymore. So after it reveals itself, we're going to go ahead and split the clip. So edit, split layer, or control shift D. And on this one, we're just going to press M and we're going to delete the mask because we don't need it. So what we want to do is go ahead and move our tell you how text or whatever text you have. Uh, in Z space and just get it out of the shot. So we're going to go ahead and motion track the Z space. Find out where you want your text to come into play. So right as soon as this starts falling back, once again, what I can do here is press U and I can look at where this starts falling back. So what I'm going to do, this is my keyframe that I had originally started the Z position on. I'm going to move this to right here and I'm going to make my text come in just like that. Okay, so I'm lining it up with the other keyframes that I had already made. This way it all is coherent and goes all together. I'm actually going to want that to move out just a little bit so you can see this falling back and then you see the tell you how text come in over it. So I'll just move these over a little bit to adjust it to what I need to. And that works fine. Now, what I did for the little wiggling at the end, which you guys probably didn't even notice, but it actually does make a huge difference. Because if you just have this text standing static after it comes in, the scene immediately gets boring. And we would not want that. So, this is very simple. All we're going to do is press P on our 3D2. Alt click, so hold down Alt and then click on the stopwatch. Now technically this is the advanced side of After Effects, but we're going to be really simple on the advanced side. So we're going to type this in. Wiggle, open parentheses, 5, comma, 5. Close parentheses and then just click away. So now what we've done is apply a wiggle position to where this text is going to move around after it comes in. It's actually moving around the whole time, but you don't know that because it's flying in. 
So this is the basic form, guys. I also put some smoke and stuff on there, and I, I had some optical flares and stuff in the background. You can get creative with that. That's easy. But I just wanted to show you how easy the new Element plugin from Video Copilot is to use, and it is amazing, guys. I love it. One more thing before I leave. I forgot to do this. We're going to go to the original 3D layer before we cut it. And we're going to go ahead and take this text out of here. Or you can just move it back in, in space. It won't matter. Just as long as it's out of the scene. And then um, it'll come in on the one that you want it to. So, um, Either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, the sound effects are yours to find. That's pretty easy. Um, but I did give you the overall run of this, and I recommend maybe just leaving some time after it wiggles around a little bit and then just cut it. That way, whenever you're using it in a video, you have some time to fade it and you're not, you know, trying to cut it immediately after it's over with. But anyways, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this. And um, as you can see, it's just that simple to make um, a cool looking intro that would have taken hours upon hours of rendering. And uh, the render time is going to be about a minute on this. So, um... Like I said, I hope you guys enjoy. As always, I am Colin with Tell You How. If you guys like this video, go ahead and check out our channel, look at our other tutorials, and I uh, hope you guys have a great day. Peace out.